Uh, thank you everyone for coming. This is uh, our second summer stream. Today we're doing a study, a study stream of, of Joe Quesada. I have, and I don't want to lose the page, so I've, I've got it kind of folded over here. This is uh, Guardian Devil, uh, the Daredevil story from Joe Quesada and Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith was the writer. Um, so I wanted to start with this figure first. By the way, I'm just kind of jumping right into this. I don't even have my, my face camera working. I just wanted to go for it because there are so many figures in here that are incredibly good. I didn't want to uh, lose too much time covering all kinds of, you know, intro stuff. I will say, though, uh, we don't have Dan Genovese. He's not here. He couldn't stay. So, you know, if you're watching this later, Dan, it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> it's always on Tuesdays. Okay. So anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to get started. And I just want to mention a few things about this figure. I wanted to start with this one because it's a silhouette. Not entirely, but close enough to a silhouette. Really, I think the if it weren't for his horns, you really kind of need to see Daredevil's horns for it to really be Daredevil. Unlike Batman, a complete silhouette doesn't really describe the, the figure. But what I thought was so great about it is so many things about Joe Quesada's anatomy that I really love and I think are so effective are really apparent here, even though you actually don't see any real actual anatomy. So I'm going to go ahead and just get started with this. So I've got my chest here and it's all very, very clear. I'm drawing a center line through my, my chest and then my, um, stomach, trunk, whatever, here. And it's still pointed down. It's actually very useful because he's got his belt here. You can still see he's still pointing his actual pelvis down. And uh, my pencil is so sharp it's digging into the paper. Oh, by the way, uh, we also have Eric here. I'm sorry, Hello. Eric. You want to introduce <laughs> Let's jump right into this. Let's go. Yeah. Uh -huh. We have Eric Grove. Uh, we're both drawing these together. So, uh, yeah, I, I think. All right. Anyway, I'm going. Here we go. Okay. So, um, his neck starts here. His head projects out forward from that and is angled down just about like this. It's actually angled pretty heavily. And I'll clean this up in just a minute, too. But, but what I think is really amazing about this figure, I've got an arm coming up here. Notice that it, the bottom of his arm is almost a straight line. It's not exactly completely a straight line, but it's almost a straight line. And I don't know, I'm assuming that, that Joe Quesada is very aware of, I mean, he's very aware of uh, a lot of things. Um, and animation, modern animation, you'll find something that they talk about quite a bit is uh, curves and uh, straights and using them uh, we have a $5 super chat from Pip. Thank you very much. And hi. <laughs> All right. And by the way, uh, tonight, any of these live streams, when I don't have Meredith, it's not really the best time to super chat just because I'll miss them. So I, I hate to do that. Uh, all right. Anyway, so, um, I'm going to just, I'm going to draw an arm. Here's, here's my tube for my arm and here's my lower arm, my hand. And, but the way Joe Quesada is doing it here, he's got a lot of shape going on on the outside of the arm here. And then this is almost a straight line down to the hand. And that's very much an animation technique. It used to be that you would have like Disney animation and they would draw an arm. It would be like this, very, very soft. And more modern animation uses something that's much more like this. And you find it all through Joe Quesada stuff. And it's something that really adds to the, the dynamics of his figures. So I wanted to start with this figure partly because he does that here really, really well. This arm does the same thing. It's just a flat tube, but then he's got his forearm attached to that like this, all very, very angular. And these hands, that's a very small figure, so you don't see too much detail on them, but uh, it's so much the way that I draw hands, and I really got it from looking at Joe Quesada. Yeah, there's so much to be gleaned from the silhouette. I don't, uh, Eddie Nunez told me the one time that uh, um, if you get your silhouettes right, like so much of the figure will fall into place. Yes. Uh, well, it, such good advice. Oh, yeah. It, it's an incredibly strong figure, and there's almost nothing to it. But that's actually not true. He wouldn't be able to do this had he not properly drawn through. And you can see he's got this kicking back more than I had it. I want to bring that back 
more. And that's part of what really gives this figure so much power is that real arc through the figure. And uh, sorry, go ahead. yeah, I've gone a little bit flat. So uh, there, I've got that kind of fixed. And you can really see he's got his knee well defined here. And you could make the argument that this leg is actually turned forward enough that you wouldn't really see the knee popping out quite like that. But it gives it a really great, again, a nice soft kind of a form here going into a hard knee. And it really defines it well. So let's go ahead and clean this up. Someone was asking me about my tape. Yeah, I'm using drafting tape on here. Dave is using tattoo tape. Alice McGlone says I do most of my construction with silhouettes. <clears throat> I, I do in a way. Uh, in some ways, this is like working with a silhouette. I'm working with outlines. Um, so yeah, that's it's not such an uncommon thing. I tend to be a little bit more sketchy. I know Mark Silvestri, who I learned from, is much more sketchy even. So I've got my head here. Uh, the eyes are I'll down. Take it, you're you're going to fill in some of the other anatomy, Dave, or are you going to... No, just... I'm going to leave it like this. I just want to make sure that it's all gotcha. in there. So I'm going to put in just enough to make sure that I've got it. Sprawl to Brawl has a $5 super chat. Thank you very much. And he says, hey, guys, I finally got to watch last week's stream in full. Totally enjoy uh, enjoyed. Do you think you will post the underpainting process on your channel? Uh, you know what? I totally forgot. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's recorded. <laughs> I, I had a convention this weekend. By the way, I, I see Greg Ellis here. I got to meet uh, Greg in uh, uh, Miami just a couple days ago. So that was very, very cool. But yeah, uh, being out of the house, it, I missed a few things. Okay, so I've got my peak for my deltoid here. And then my tricep, another peak there. And then it comes up for the uh, forearm here. And he's got his forearm. He's got some shape to it. And then this, he his um, um, bicep, he's doing just as a, a flat line. That is interesting because I always try and figure out how to, you know, put that, put this muscle in here. I wonder if this goes along with that, um, you know, being part of the gesture, Dave, where if... Um, you know, you have the center line here, and then up from here, you have this. So oh, the bottom, right. the bottom yeah. you know, works being flat because of that. Uh, yeah. Kind of the same with legs. If you have, you know, your hips and then you have that, it, the outer definition can be there. Yeah, and it's, it's all very strategic. And... Um, Depending on your, your underlying anatomy, too, because we all kind of learn anatomy differently, the way that you're going to define some of these things, it, it changes. I think the important thing is really uh, knowing why he's doing it. Um, and then you can really make it work for yourself. Like, I think I shaped this like a little bit differently. And my anatomy is not the same as, as his. He's really peeked that knee out. Let me. <clears throat> Greg says, uh, it was great meeting you, Dave. Thanks. Thank you so much again for your time and help. Oh, yeah. So, always a pleasure. All right. So, yeah, let's just get through this quickly. There's not really too much that I want to show there. Now, I know my center line cuts through here and down through, and my legs um, form up just like this. And I didn't really draw a lot of that form in there. Uh, I, I didn't really feel like I needed to, but it's probably a good idea to do that if you're a little uncomfortable. Uh, so, yeah, I think actually that that looks really good, Eric. The one thing I would say is just his head is tilted basically straight, and he's got his head tilted way down. Yeah. Apparently my camera's out of focus. Yeah. Never it never happens, right? <laughs> hey, Wade King is here. By the way, I also met uh, uh, Wade in Miami. He sent pictures. I still don't have them. I never got them. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Um, I gave you my email. So, uh, yeah, it was great to meet you, Wade. I have some prints from Wade, actually. I've got a Spider-Man and a, um, um, an Iron Man print. So, yeah, thank you very much for that. Uh, really nice looking stuff. All right. So I'm going to move on to the next one. I've got so many figures in here that I kind of want to cover that. Uh, you ready to move on? Uh, yeah. Okay. 
So uh, I'm terrible to my books. I've got all of my pages that I wanted to draw some stuff from uh, turned over. Tomakar says, uh, I study mostly Quesada shadows more than construction uh, because because it can sometimes be off proportions. Now, his proportions, truthfully, are off a lot of times, but they're very purposely off. So uh, while I agree with that, I, I've definitely played with it a lot. It, this is where uh, studying Joe Quesada um, or any artist like this where it's more stylized, you really have to have uh, a basis a basic understanding of anatomy going in. Where's my next thing that I wanted to do here? <clears throat> Dave and I were kind of talking about it before. I was, I was wondering if anyone here knows if, for example, like Ryan Otley, does, did Ryan Otley take inspiration from Casada at all? Because some of the shape shapeology, what is that word? Kind of. Shapeology? <laughs> yeah, shapeology reminds me of um, Casada's work. Um, yeah. Okay, so I wanted to work with this figure next. And this one, Eric, is is going to uh, be, just, I think, in like issue two. Uh, where is this one? It's issue two. And uh, this figure for me. It's not in my book, Dave. It's I'm not joking. in your book? I'm just joking. Okay. All right. It's a tough pose. <laughs> Uh, Paul Essence says, uh, Dave, these figure studies are awesome. Will you go uh, do a rendering study uh, at some stage, like how Travis Trest uh, renders his figures? Yeah, absolutely. In a lot of ways, I think that would actually be easier uh, to do because it's rendering is there. There are a lot of different things that go into art, and this is more foundational. I mean, this is obviously this is stylized foundational, but it's very foundational. Whereas rendering, because it's more of a finish. Um, it's it's a little easier to understand, I think, just at face value. All right, uh, here we go. So, uh, by the way, I want to say with this figure, what I love about it is he's got all of his weight balanced on this hand here, and you can see that he's pushing he's pushing all of his energy all the way from his feet, curving down and down in through that hand, and uh, um, he's even got his body arced out and pushed out to that hand. So just as a really, really simple drawing, his upper body peeks out here at the shoulder and goes down through the arm. And the whole arm has a curve and it's curved because if it was completely straight, it would actually take away a lot of the energy going right down into that hand. And so he's curving his hand here and he's got his other hand coming out uh, towards us. I need my eraser. and then right through to the feet. And the other reason I wanted to pick this figure uh, is uh, this is going to be very difficult for me to draw upside down. And I don't want to turn it, so I'm going to leave it this way. Yeah, but... that was going to be a question for me. Yeah. When you when you deal with this in your pages, you know, commissions, whatever, do you, do you flip him around? And I mean, you'd have to, right? Uh, yeah, I do. I don't oh. draw upside down. So I'm going to try and do it now, and we'll see. I mean, so much of this, too, is, well, I want to say it's when I'm when I'm copying something, I'm looking at negative space a lot. So a really, and this is something that I think you can get a lot out of is uh, he's got a really nice shape going on in here. And you can see this is a, another place where he's really using just a simple description of shape all the way through here from his foot all the way down and out to his arm. And that's part of why it has so much energy. But the point, the reason I'm saying this is that shape I can draw out to his hand, and it's about like that. And this shape in here is just about like that. And I can get quite a bit of this figure uh, worked out just using negative space around the figure. Uh, it's it's actually, it's a very useful way to think. Everyone's saying my camera's out of focus. There's nothing I can do. It looks actually better now, but yeah, it's, it, it's going in and out of focus. It's weird, because I have... This, Um, autofocus is turned off, and I don't know why it's doing that. Yeah. Okay, and this is the part where I'm going to turn this over because I'll never be able to do this. I truthfully cannot draw a figure upside down. So here we go. We're upside down. I'm going to turn my reference over to... I hate to do it. I'd love to be able to just go, hey, let's just draw a figure totally upside down. But yeah, it's beyond my ability, and I don't know. Maybe Joe Casada can do it, but I sure can't. All right. And I know I'm destroying my book. 
I've got a couple of copies, don't worry. Truthfully, I'd probably draw it better upside down because I'd be concentrating more. You know, it's possible, but the thing is, understanding the figure is more important than getting it right, you know? Yeah. So, so I've got my head uh, here. It's tilted upwards quite a bit. Something I really appreciate with his art, too, is he's actually got, you can see the underside of his chin here. And so his jawline is going down like this. Uh, and you see the underside of it. I drew it dark and he's got his the opposite way, but it's not really. It's something that I find a lot of times, and I tend to do this too, no matter how high I, if I draw a head and I'm looking up at the head. So here we go. Here's my eyes, my nose, my mouth. I'll still end up doing this for the jaw and curving it down because it's easier. Whereas he's really not taking that cheat at all. He's got it working and it's harder to make a jaw work like this. I'm sure you guys have run into that before. So anyway, moving on. There's so much going on in these figures. There is. Yeah. Dave, I noticed something here. I wonder if, I'm wondering if this is where you got this from when you, uh, foreshorten an, foreshorten an arm, um, and you have your fist, whatever. When you when you scrunch up the um, whatever that muscle is, <laughs> right? Yeah, you get this from Casada. Yes, totally. My oh, by the way, yeah, this is something I do all the time. Uh, arms coming towards you, or and legs uh, entirely from Joe Casada, and truly no one else. Like no one. Okay. It's, uh, also Walt Simonson, Walt Simonson too, but mostly Joe Casada. It's amazing to me how that little trick. Uh, can sell for shortening so well. Yeah, it really, really can. The more you, the more you tilt this towards the camera, the more it bunches up further down the, um, the object. Yeah. yeah. Not sure I'm explaining it very well, but uh, Dave's video on foreshortening goes over that. For anyone who's interested. Uh, yes. Yeah. That's that's true. Something else I like that he's doing is his triceps. He really uh, accentuates the peak of the uh, tricep. Yeah, yeah, he really does. It, now, I, I want to say his hand is basically here. And it feels really short to me when I'm doing this. But if you look at the original, it doesn't look short at all. And that is entirely because of what you were just talking about, Eric. I'm going to give it a nice big yeah. key. So, you. man, people are really riding me about my camera. There's not much I can do, guys. I'm, I'm on a gig internet connection. Yeah, uh, you know what? We'll we'll have to take a look at it. We'll figure it out. It is what it is for right now. Yeah. This is how it goes. This is live streams. I don't know what it is. It happened during the painting stream too. Yeah, you know, it I, is what it is. I really don't know why. Through it. I know it happens when we work together sometimes too. So yeah, here's his arm uh, for shortened. And even though it's coming toward me and it's it it seems like it would be odd using the shapes that he's using, uh, it really, really reads very well. Another thing that he's doing, my direction of my hand is pointing, or my arm, the whole thing is pointed out this way. And you notice his... Uh, it's not your index finger. Which finger is that? Whatever. The first finger is pointed along the, the arm and it's much more powerful. And this is something you'll see with figure skaters or, or dancers is, so I've watched a lot of dances, dancing with stars, where, whatever. So you think you can dance. Anyway, I've watched a lot of dancing shows. Uh, Meredith, my wife likes those things. And uh, I don't have the remote. So anyway, something you see like with judges, they comment all the time. And uh, you have to point all the way through, you know, your toes and your fingers. And this is what they mean. It is so much more powerful to point all the way through the entire, your arm all the way through. And you'll also notice that he's really pushing not just his arm forward, but his whole chest is pushing forward too. And that's a really, really difficult thing to get. Um, and I don't know that I've ever done it that well. I, I mean, it's Joe Casada, but still, <laughs> I'm pretty proud of it anyway. 
I really, I think I'd like to try and remember that. So now for his leg, he's got his knee here and he's really peaked that knee and he's doing it because this is what's really, it's going to be a similar kind of an effect to what he has with his forearm here. Really, yeah, I say, that's the exact same, uh, same thing. Just yes. on the leg now. And now he's going to do the same thing with his leg. The lower leg is like this and his boot really accentuates it nicely, which I love. Let me just get his feet in there quickly. His feet are, I mean, they're, they're great, but they're not really the point with this figure for me. So there's his feet, his lower leg, he's got it flat here. And then he's really created a, a shape here. And so Tomek, when you say that his anatomy can be a little strange, this is where it can be a little strange. I mean, that's, uh, that's exaggerated hundred percent, but it's exaggerated in a really effective way. And there's this other leg there. Yeah, it came out really well, Eric. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> again, in the video that David did on uh, foreshortening, these overlapping shapes is what sells foreshortening. Yeah. These T shapes. This form is in front of this form, so you get you get that. So that forms ahead of that one, and then it comes back this way, and this form is calf muscles in front of that form. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, he really does it a lot here. He does. And this kind of thing, I don't know where a lot of artists learned it. Now, now I can tell you that I learned it from working in a studio uh, with a lot of the artists, but working on your own, um, it's not something that I see commonly described. So I, again, I'm going to leave the anatomy for this. I just really want to concentrate on the shapes. We will actually be working on an, his anatomy um, toward the, the second part of this. But for the first part, I really want to just concentrate on on uh, his figure dynamics. So I didn't foreshorten his leg nowhere near enough. His feet should be here, but. Yeah, well, and see, this is where, uh, and if you look at his, his shape comes into a really nice circle and connects. Mine yeah. extends out a little bit further, so I, I might want to bring, yeah. but just using that negative space right. there, now, this isn't something that's really all that useful if you're drawing a figure yourself, but if yeah. you are looking at something, anytime you're referencing anything, it's, it makes it so much easier Yeah. To, to do that. All right. And I also use this technique for years. I would do a little layout for a cover and I'd say, okay, here's my, my page and I've got a figure here and then my background is kind of here and there you go, you know, and I'd have a bunch of detail in there. Well, when I want to blow that up really big, what I would do is I'd say, okay, that's about halfway, a little further than halfway at my picture. So I'd start there on my picture halfway up and that goes down to, there's about, you know, that much. And so I draw the bottom of my figure. I wouldn't even worry about drawing a figure. I would just place the bottom there and it makes it really easy for me just using shape um, language and just distances to place everything uh, really accurately instead of having to, um, you know, blow up your layout. I've seen people do that where you blow it up and trace it and it's a lot of work. All right. Let's keep moving. Uh, Tomacar says, I love his buildings too. Yeah, I, I have to say his hands are some of my absolute favorites and uh, we don't have time for that either. Like there are so many things, his, his lighting. I want to cover as much as we, that hand right there is uh, really amazing. I'm getting a little blown out for some reason. What is going on? So, someone mentioned that maybe my lens is dirty. I'm just going to quickly. We're all having trouble here. OK. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> all right. Um, you know what? Actually, before we move on, I want to do that hand. Which one? This one. It's just a couple pages later. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Okay. I'm destroying this book right now. Hold on. I need to make it fit in the screen. Uh, Michael Johnson Curry asks, uh, have either of you uh, met Joe? He rarely talks about his process. How does his process differ from yours? Uh, yeah, well, he was my boss for a long time. And uh, uh, he was the editor in chief of Marvel. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I uh, talk to him a lot, actually. Um, and I've 
he used to have his studio actually in the Marvel. He, well, he had a studio at home, but he had a studio in the Marvel uh, office. So he would work there too. And uh, so I got to see his whole setup. And um, that was actually the first time I ever saw SketchUp. I saw it in his office. He was showing it to me. Uh, his process, and you can actually see some of it at the end of this book. If I'm not wrong, it might be. Yeah, you can see. So here's some pencils. Um, um, someone asked if this book is the only reference for this evening. Yes. It is, yeah. I, I have another one that I really wanted to use. I could not find it. Does he have layouts in here? He doesn't have layouts in Ford. Oh, wait, here we go. Here's a layout. So you can see he's got his initial layout, and he's working with, uh, it looks like he did this actually on the computer. He wouldn't have always done that. But he's working with very graphic black and white shapes, so it's a very deliberate thing. Um, and then from here, he's gone in and done his finished pencils. He's decided to raise the arm. Uh, it's it's debatable. I don't know. I like this figure a lot, but I also like this one. So, And then for his final version, you can see he actually really contradicted originally what he had for his lighting scheme and went very dark with Daredevil. I think it's very effective. Um, if I'm being totally honest, I would say I like it more like this. But, I mean, whatever. I mean, the figure looks great. And it totally uh, pops off of the background anyway. So, all right. There's a lot going on in this hand, too. What's that? There's a lot going on with, with his hand here, too. It's very gestural. Again, there's this yeah. sweeping line that goes from his thumb to his forefinger. There's no, there's no detail. There's no inner definition here. I don't, I don't know if that's a term, but it makes sense to me. <laughs> All his definition yeah. will be this side of this of this line. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to get started on mine. So I've got my wrist coming in here. And uh, I'm going to draw my hand just as a simple um, shape, just like this. And then uh, the thumb comes out like this. And uh, something you were talking about just a bit earlier, Eric. So he's got his thumb coming out here. He's got a bump here. I mean, that's going to be this right here. And he's got it overlapping here. I, I don't see an overlap there, actually. But he has this overlapping, right. so it pushes it back. And then, like you were saying, a nice curve all the way through here uh, to this finger. But he also has a nice curve here. And he follows it here through his fingers. He's got these fingers joined. It's something I really like to do. It's like yeah. getting two figure fingers with uh, only having to do the work of one, of placing one. Yeah, and then, a lot of artists do that. Yeah. When you bend your hand, you get a bit of a bump out here, and he's really... Uh, played that up quite a bit and it yeah. again really pushes that shape back yeah he's catching it looks like the knuckle and then this part of the hand here this meaty part yep inside of him and it would be very easy to draw this finger coming out here i'm going to draw this and just round this finger but he's he's got his hand this finger is coming out at this angle and so he's really angled that the bottom of the hand or the bottom of the finger there that way. It really, really helps sell that whole shape. And then uh, um, he's got his knuckles. And you can see he's defined that knuckle here. Gone all the way dark with it. I'm going to draw the shadow on this one because I really like it. He uses his own hands as reference a lot too. Yeah. And it's, it's very graphically done, which is... Um, I love being able to, to look at it because you can see how, uh, even though it's referenced, he's simplifying it down in, in a way that makes it uh, just make a lot of graphic sense. This is really the way to, if you're going to use reference, it's the way to do it. Yeah, I've got so many questions with these back of the hand here. Well, so there's a tendon here, a tendon here, a tendon here, and here. And yeah. there's also veins. So he's kind of actually describing a vein with this shape. Yeah. It looks like something other than a tendon. Yeah, it, it does. And that's that more vein, of a, it looks like it's casting a shadow too. Yeah. And then he's got a shadow defined in here. And 
truthfully, this isn't really, by the way, my thumb's a little small. Let me fix that. Um, how I would do it. And you can see that this is his um, tendon coming through here. So I'm going to draw that in there. And then this all just goes dark. So it's very simplified. And you can be sure that his hand that he was actually using as reference was not so simple, but he's just taken all the shapes and, and picked out what's most important graphically. This vein here casts a really interesting shadow over the whole hand and he's just used that. And he put in this knuckle here. I'm not even sure if that knuckle would appear that way uh, on his actual hand, but it just defines it nicely. I hope that's helpful. We just spent a whole bunch of time on a hand, but I really love it. Definitely helpful. I mean, the same rules that we're applying to that first figure is all here. Yeah. Uh, um, so I, I just drew the his shirt collar too, and notice it's it's all completely flat lines for the most part. It's all very hard. And here, there's a hard it goes to here. It's not just um, soft curves, <clears throat> which uh, I've been kind of trying to play with more with some of my fabric, working with harder lines. And that, by the way, that leads me to the next thing I really wanted to talk about his stuff is, is not only is he using really interesting animation uh, kinds of shapes using like curves and then juxtaposing them with, with straights, he also uses angularity in his figures a lot. So um, I'm ready to move on, you ready? Yeah. All right. And somebody, I, I missed it saying that he uses a 4-H. Um, and you can see some of his pencils here. I don't know if that's true, actually. That I never asked. It looks like, it looks like 2-H. Well, well, I use a 2-H. Um, <laughs> so it might be similar. I can tell you this, though. Talking to Danny McKee, who's inked them for years, uh, the hardest thing about inking his work is once you start, the pencils are so light, it's very difficult to see uh, where you are. So what he does is he actually photocopies the pages and puts it beside himself on the desk so he can see, you know, what he's looking at and not get lost. <clears throat> I'm learning how to draw, says David Finch, just do that 24 hour video I know you want to do. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm not thinking to myself how I'd like to do a 24 hour video. <clears throat> That one? It's, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, right there. That's right. Yeah. Your colors on yours are, are darker. And I don't mean your screen, like the colors <clears throat> are printed darker, which is a real shame. Because there are such great graphic shapes in here. And that's actually what I wanted to talk about with this one is uh, we're going to talk about his overall form and the way that. So let's start. Um, <clears throat> his whole figure, the whole statement of it is this arc all the way, and it, it really curves all the way back into his head, which is angled down out this way. And then it curves all the way down through, and he's kicked this leg back to kick that out this way. You can't see what I'm drawing. I'm drawing little arrows and garbage all over my page. but So there's a, a real statement all the way through that figure. And his foot is... Well, his, his foot is the way you would draw the foot. So uh, anyway, this is a live stream. You know, every once in a while, I'm going to get a little lost. Uh, we have a, uh, a super chat from Scurafin. Thank you very much for $5. He says, I like your videos. I appreciate it. Or they say. Um, anyway, so I want to start just with that statement. Uh, let me just turn this over. I really kind of am not using my page, my uh the most economically but all right so i've got a curve coming all the way through the figure like this really pushing back through the head and that's the overall statement of the figure and so everything needs to really serve that so i'm going to draw my chest here my whole chest really is angled upward this is my center line for my trunk below my chest my pelvis. Let's lighten this down just a little bit. It's kind of getting in the way. And now um, I, I remember uh, talking about some of the anatomy in here, and I know this is something I've gotten a lot of questions about, 
uh, is a really great example of why you can say, and I think you can truthfully say that his anatomy is is very different and can be a little confusing if you're trying to reconcile it with with uh, the anatomy that you know. But um, the understanding of areas like this, knees, uh, elbows, things like that is so incredible in his work. And you can see he, he really knows his anatomy. These are all choices that he's making. So I've got my lat in here. I'm, you know what, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get this figure sketched in. Here's my other arm. Um, his chest from this angle, with his arms raised the way that they are, it would also raise his clavicle. But you really don't see it because you're actually seeing, um, you're you're seeing a certain way down the chest. So you can actually see where it, it connects through here, and it's it's um, it's disappearing outside of view. All right. This is a nasty one. Having trouble with this one? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> the whole time I'm drawing it, I'm thinking about these two arms and how I don't know how to draw the triceps from that angle. Yeah. So he's uh, he's got a nice flat line here and then a lot more shape on the outside of his leg here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that first. I'm going to draw that flat through there. And then I can connect that there. And that goes to a, a, his knee uh, here. And then... Uh, his lower leg. I like to draw that as a ball. Uh, maybe I should be drawing it more like a diamond, you know, like that. And I think that might actually kind of work for the way he draws his his anatomy a little bit better. And my foot. He's got big Mickey Mouse feet, which you would think wouldn't work, but it looks great. I don't know why. All right. Now for this leg, this is going to be a tough one. Uh, I know it starts here, so that's going to be my circle where I want to start it, just right there. And it ends, my knee is going to be just about here. And so I'm going to draw a circle for my knee. And now I really want to peek the shape in between here, nice and high. Define that knee. And then <clears throat> I'm going to try that diamond shape again for the lower leg. Connect it to here, and then he's got... Uh, that tube, which again is really nicely described with that boot. I love how those boots help with that. Oh, and when you draw a leg, so here's my leg. The lower leg, the outside of the lower leg is higher here on the right here and then lower here. This is the inside of your leg and here's your foot. Um, and then the ankle is the opposite way. So this one is higher, this one's lower. And look at this. He's got this lower and this one higher. He just does not make those kinds of mistakes. So there's something throwing me off real bad here, Dave. <clears throat> Maybe you can help me figure it out. The bottom of his rib cage. So his rib cage is here. Yeah. And it looks like his del his pec is over here. Right. I don't know if Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, yeah. I am totally confuzzled. I want to bring this out just a little bit more. I feel Sorry. Like I'm gonna... I'll, I'll I'll wait till you get there. Yeah, it, it does make sense. I'll show you. Okay. I feel like I went a little bit narrow here and i didn't measure anything here so you can see my foot isn't exactly lined up but that's fine all right <clears throat> so i'm going to draw a line in for my my chest it's going to be just like this and you really can't see it in his reference but this is the way that it would go and it would connect here i've got my uh, deltoid here my other peak for my deltoid let me fix this because it's not right is here and then my lat connects underneath and up underneath the arm like this. <clears throat> so we've got that. And then my uh, my chest on this side, he's he's actually he's got his here, let me I'm getting a little bit screwy here, but he's got his um, rib cage here, really low. It, it's an interesting shape there, and I don't understand yeah. why. 
Uh, so I'm going to ignore yeah. it since I don't understand it. And then this is either his rib cage here, or this would be his other lat. Um, so if I connect here, I've got the other side of my deltoid here. I'm going to say that the lat would be kind of there, and that would work for me. Yeah, this is his deltoid. This might be the lamp that he's drawing there, yeah. Yeah. He also, <clears throat> something really uh, that I love is he hasn't peeked out his his uh, tricep here. Notice that? It's just a curve. Yeah. That's, uh, you know why that is, eh? So stretched. I, I mean, I know it's super stretched. That is, yeah, that's exactly why it's stretched out. So, you know, if it was, if it's bunched up, basically, if you straighten your arm, um, your muscles, so your, here's my arm and I've got it straight. That's going to bunch up this muscle. And if I bend my arm, I'm off the page. Hold on. If I bend my arm, uh, like this, that's going to really stretch that muscle out and it's going to make it much flatter and it'd be so easy. And I've no, I'm sure I've done this. I'm going to do it. So I've got my elbow here and now I've got that muscle there. And it looks not bad, would you say? I think it looks pretty yeah. good. Yeah. But so much better the way that he's done it. And you can see this is not him looking at some kind of photograph. I don't know. There's like a, a level of genius to the people that do it best. Because he yeah, see, this, it. this here, I think this little jutting out here, that's the flesh being squashed, right? Because the arm is bent. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's the... Uh... Okay, so let's get into that rib cage. I don't know where the where the um, triceps are. Though. So his rib cage, if it connects here, on this side, it would have to be basically right. Here, yeah. Right. So what these are? These are just the upper part of the serratus here that he's got really defined, and then the lower part would be here. So you're only seeing the upper part connecting through here, and so you're looking at it as the line for his rib cage, but it's really not. That's just the, yeah. So that's all that is. And then the lower part of it would be here. He's got a thicker line here because with the light coming kind of this way, you'd get a pool of shadow here. It'd be a little less here. He really angles that line out crazily. And then he's got a really thick shadow here. I don't understand. I'm going to say right now. This is very thin compared to this, but the angle is kind of the same. And then when he goes under here, he goes thin and thin here and then thicker here. To me, I wouldn't do that, truthfully. And this is where, look, uh, Joe Casada is a, a genius. And, you know, um, you have to, no matter how much you love somebody's artwork, uh, no matter how great they are, you have to be able to make it work for yourself. And so if you have rules, and for me, the rule would be, if I'm drawing that, and I'm going to go ahead and do that. If I'm going thicker here, it would be thinner here and then thicker here and then thinner here, thicker here, and then I would go thicker here and then thin there. That's how I would do it. Uh, I would have to. I wouldn't be able to do it the other way. So it, sometimes there are just choices that, and I'm sure he has his reasons. I just don't understand them and I ultimately have to make it work for myself. Uh, so he's got his stomach basically in here. There's some interesting shapes there. This is where using some of his, his overall lighting and then having your own understanding of anatomy is really going to help you. Because a lot of his, his um, I feel like the way he defines his, his muscles, I don't think he's really worrying about being truly accurate with a lot of the little shapes. He's using things that I, I think he, he feels like um, make things more dynamic. Like this, for instance, this kind of a shape here, the way he's cut up in through here, I don't quite understand why. I'm going to do it because I think it looks really good, but I don't really get it the way that that's cut. But it works. And ultimately, me not understanding the way he's done that there. Uh, that's because my understanding of how that works is from other artists, truthfully, you know? Does that make sense, Eric? You yeah. Know what I mean? yep. So, it, like, I'm taking what I know from other artists and then trying to reconcile it with what I'm seeing from this artist. And that's always 
this is why so many times learning something new can break what you already know, and it can be a very frustrating process. Very, very graphic shapes all through here. <clears throat> yeah, this is a very tough angle. It is, but that's, you know, he doesn't shy away from anything yeah. like this. It's what makes this stuff so good. Uh, his knee. I, I'm seeing a solid line through here, and it works fine because the shapes are, are so well-defined. Dave, did you get your lower legs from Kasana, your foreshortened legs? Yeah, I got a ton, of, like so much from them. Now, I, I got it from a bunch of different artists, but yes, a lot of... Um, so I see that whole um, um, accentuating the, you know... Tomacart says uh, John Basema said he would be interesting. And um, uh, I'm learning how to draw. Says, have you tried to study John Byrne? Now, I have to say, I, um, for me, I would have been more inclined to do John Basema just because he's a huge influence on me. Yeah. Um, Pose is like, incredible. Yeah, John Byrne is, is phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, the knee is in front of this shape here. I'd be kind of inclined to do that. So I've got this line coming in front of that one. And then when I draw the knee through, it kind of pops that forward. Um, it works just fine like that. It's not None of these things are necessary to do every single time it needs to be that way. It's just these are all techniques that you can draw from, um, and you can use them as, as you need them. And so he's got his kneecap defined in a very kind of Frazetta way. It's a change of plan, uh, plane, so he's drawn that knee dark. And I love how he defines his his uh, muscles in his lower leg here. Something that is a, a bit of a challenge. And this I totally get from Americ. Yeah. So yeah. His outer muscle here. So much so, I get this from Joe Quesada so much that I cheat to the point where I don't even draw the form in for this stuff. I just draw these kinds of shapes. And say how he's got this muscle kind of ro uh, routing through and then going into this one. Um, does it do that? I don't know, but it looks great to me. And I have been doing that for years. And it, again, totally based on Joe Quesada. The amount of things that I don't know really much about, and I just do it because I like how another artist did it, it's a lot. And I find it's a real problem with, um, with doing tutorials when I realize, wow, I have no idea how that works. Uh, so he's got a, a light through here on this side of the leg, and it's popping the leg from... I didn't do it on the knee. I should have. But that's separating out from the other leg here. So I, I promised myself I wouldn't get too into the weeds with these figures and just try and really, you know, stick to a theme with each figure. But as I do this stuff, there's just so much in each figure to Yeah. To it's meeting. And uh, <clears throat> he's got a cast shadow from this leg onto this leg. So it cuts down through here and I could just make this dark mm -hmm. here. And then he's got this muscle defined. He's got his knee very simplified. Yeah, I don't understand this here on his lower leg because I'd be more inclined to make that flat. Um, Can you do it the way that you would do it and show me? Because I'm not sure totally what yeah, you mean. Yeah, it's, it's something I know, I know it's something I've asked you before. If I okay. were to, if these were hips. And I'm just, I'm starting to make up weird little shapes in there. <laughs> Not really even anything, but I, I'm using all, the, this is so taken from Joe Casado, all this stuff. Um, Might've got a little carried away there, but it'll work well enough. <clears throat> so this over here, um, I know it's something that's thrown me off before. Uh, I see what you mean, yeah. When you're looking more at the inside of the leg, over here, um, you see the you see the um, <laughs> I'm forgetting what muscle names the calf muscle. 
yeah. But truthfully, there is actually a bit of a bulge here too. So it'd be more like that. I always forget to draw. Yeah, and it would. You're right. It would be more like that. Yeah, and but even, um, and I see it in yours, and and it's something I've always um, strived to place in because really, if you. If, if if I were to just do this, it looks wrong. If you just yeah. add the shin, it doesn't look right. There's no, it doesn't. Yeah, there needs to be some kind of. I mean, I'm sure there's some muscle riding on top there, but yeah. Anyway. Yeah, and I, I like that shape, so I'm gonna put it back in there. There we go. All right. Um, I think that's enough to kind of cover that figure. We don't need to go further with that. It's just darkening through here. Yeah, there's a lot to take in on that. So let's move on to the next one. I've got all of the stuff. I just fold over my pages like bookmarks. So let me flip through until we stop. Henry Jermick. Oh, Henry's here. Good to see you. Says, uh, I like Joe Q's early stuff. Ninjak, Nightfall, Batman, Azrael. His Daredevil stuff is a little too cartoony for me. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, okay, I'm going to say I love his early stuff. And it's very, very angular. More angular than this. But I also love this, and it's it's a different phase in his career, and I actually don't have a preference. Um, I love them both a lot. So it, it's it's yeah, it's a tough one. I yeah. do love the early stuff. <clears throat> his um, sort of Israel stuff, the the way he draws legs, the thighs in particular there. Oh man, yeah. The way he renders them is definitely something worth worth referencing. I'll see if I can get a page here in a bit from there. There are so many figures. You know what? I, I think we should do this one. I didn't even have this one. I've got so many in here. We Honestly, we could be here. It's already almost 10 o'clock. This one here? Yeah, I, I kind of want to do that one. Let's see what else I've got bookmarked. So what do I have here? This will be a good one. Yeah, let's do this one. There's a lot. Again, there's so much going on here. Yeah. <clears throat> it's just right. opening from head to toe, <laughs> literally. Try and get it into my camera here. Squish my book down. Again, I've got a few copies. I know the worst with my books. And this is not just for the sake of the live stream. I do this with all my books, just on my own too. Michael Johnson Curry says, honestly, I think Joe Mad uh, should be next for study. His dynamism is second only to Lee and Kirby. Uh, or maybe for Zeta women. Yeah, those are all great choices. Now, my opinion, I, I think his dynamism is second to none. And I think Joe Casadas is too, you know? Like, I, I couldn't say one is more dynamic than the other, but they're both um, remarkable for it. All right. Here we go. So I'm going to draw his... I, it's not showing up on the screen. I'm getting a bit of a glare, so I'm trying to hold it. His upper body... Oh, you're beating me with this one. There's a hole for my neck. I always like to draw that in. It just helps me place the head. So there's his chest shape. And then my trunk. My pelvis. Uh, on the topic of Savage Sword, we would love to see an Earl Norum or a Boris Vallejo study. They did some fantastic Savage Sword covers, says Jonathan Opsa. Os Ospa. Sorry. Hey, Dan DeSantos is here. Good to see you, Dan. Uh, yeah, uh, we're uh, we're having fun with this one. Hopefully, this is hopefully this is good. Um, I would love to do a, a Boris Vallejo uh, study. We actually, Eric and I, did a few thumbnail paintings of some of his stuff, and I think that would actually be a lot of fun to do. What do you think? Oh yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So I've got one leg here and I'm just going to kind of throw him in right now because I want to talk about what he's doing with his, with his forms. And it's a little difficult to do that when I'm so, and this one's actually higher than what I had. Okay. And it's wrong right now. I'm working on it. It's also David, there's so much we can talk about here with stuff that <clears throat> I've experienced that you've kind of, help me break out from and that is raising raising the armholes <laughs> and yeah. uh, making sure that you're aligning your uh 
your arm correctly to that is man yeah that is such a such a hard thing to um well and this is andrew loomis when he draws a, a chest shape i'm just going to draw it kind of straight on uh, obviously i'm drawing superhero version so it's all you know pushed upwards i can't help it but he doesn't draw a hole here along the side he actually does a real cut in uh across the form like this. Where's my eraser? I'll use this one. And I actually really have liked that lately because it, it feels like it gives me a lot more freedom with my arms. And he'll draw actually a, like a uh, this kind of a shape, uh, like a shoulder pad, and then he has the arm coming out underneath it. And the advantage of that, something I really like, is this becomes a separate piece and I can raise this, this up like this. And it naturally um, fixes that problem of having the, the arm not attached properly. So I really like that. And uh, <clears throat> so I'm kind of doing that here. I'm angling these in and that means that I can really, and now I don't draw that actual shape. What I, I do is I just draw a ball, but I know where I want it to be. So I'm going to draw a ball for my shoulder here a ball for this shoulder here. And then he's got his hands really kind of covering his head. He's got one hand here. So let's just rough that in really quickly. His arm attaches to it this way. By the way, I tend to draw my hands and then the arm attaching. Just seems to work easier for me. I don't know if that would work well for everyone, but that's how I like to do it. So here's his other hand here. We'll clean this up, don't worry. Sprawl to Brawl has a $5 super chat. Thank you very much. And he says, hey, Dave, I don't know if this is, isn't your fault in regards to shipping on your book on Kickstarter, but any intel on when they will be received? Thanks. Uh, yeah, you know what? They're um, coming to us still, uh, and they should be here very, very soon. And as soon as they come, I'm um, uh, going to head over from Canada. I'm uh, going over to, to meet them and sign everything and get it out. But... Uh, yeah, it's taken a little while to to get here. It's been a little frustrating, but they're coming. Okay, so there's there's my basic upper body. Um, here, let's get this back here. I'm really far off here. You can see that. So let's fix that. And with his leg, he's not going directly in here, which is something that I would kind of tend to do. He's really bringing it around and making a whole arc all the way down to the bottom with it. Uh, obviously, you can't get away with a complete you know, shape like that, but that's really the statement. So I'm going to cut that in. I've got my knee here, and then I'm going to draw my kind of diamond shape here, which I still I really like. Now, he's got it flattened on the sides, but that's the basic shape that I like actually more than the circle that I've been kind of doing for a while. And then his lower leg, he's got like a tube, which is a shape that I really like. So. So definitely much more like this. I feel like I'm going to lose this figure a little bit. Like I, what I have here is not really capturing it as well as I'd like, Eric. But yeah, it's another, it's another tough one. A lot of, there's a lot to digest on all these figures. There is, and as much as I've looked at his work for uh, for years, it's amazing how much starting to draw a figure can really. Um, I just picked up something else. else. Well, yeah, yeah, and you see how much you don't actually understand. Yeah, I can again see something in the lower leg that I've seen on on yours. So I've yes, got my um, hands. Oh, sorry. It's okay. What we said before on. Uh, on shapes like the lower leg and the calf. Yeah. Instead of instead of just doing a um, doing a curve, you can make it, you know, very hard edged like that. And he's doing it here on his calf. He's using the overlapping shapes, but then um, using the hard edges to define the calf muscle. Yep. Yeah, he's very consistent with uh, some of his techniques that just really, really work. He he does them. But what's cool, though, is he opposes it with a soft curve here. 
the thigh is softer, and then the the calf is uh, using hard edges. So I've got my hands in. Nice, hard, flat lines for my deltoid. And you can actually see his head. This is his nose all the way down here. And I've got my head way up there. Um, yeah, it's hard for me to reconcile. It's so, it's a much bigger head. So his figure is, has a lot more force perspective than what I was giving it. Let's try and fix that. I was wondering what that was, part of his head. Yeah, it's part of his head. And it looks right. But it just seems it's like it's so extreme and I still haven't pushed it anywhere. Like I've ended mine here and I just can't, I can't put it further. I can't make that work. I'm not going to try. I love the way you shaded the deltoid here. Yes. Yeah. So he's got his deltoid and it's, it's very hard lines too. shadowed here. And then a very simple flat, hard line there. It is really great. I'm just drawing exactly what you did, but yes. Um, so now his, his chest below that, I came up a little bit high and I'm going to adjust that to try and capture a little bit more what he had. And I think that'll be a little bit better. So let me fix the legs to fit. And really, I know I've said this a bunch of times. By the way, this arm here, really wrong. Look at how long that is. I'm going to adjust that. My excuse is that he's got something covering it, so I couldn't see it. I had a problem with the other arm. I kept yeah. I raced, I raced it like three or four times. There, I think that's, that's a little bit better. It's not so extremely long. It was looking very odd. All right. So I've got my pelvis. I'm bringing the pelvis down quite a bit. And he's got his line coming all the way through in a nice arc from here down into the lower leg here. And then he's sticking this out. Uh, sticking this out. He's got his, his lower leg shape, that kind of diamond shape. And he's flattening it off here. Here's the knee flattening it here and then it goes into the tube for the lower leg and here we go and he's actually he's done this twice i don't know how visible it is for you guys um this is actually an inside curve here and then it connects to an outside curve and this is the same, it, it's an inside curve. So it goes this way and then it connects this way, which is not really, I mean, you would not see that kind of a shape in a, in a body on his hip here. Let me try and do that. So it's an inside curve connecting to an outside curve, just like this. It's very interesting and it's really dynamic. All right. I don't have a huge amount to say with the lighting on this one. So, yeah, it's uh, a lot of interesting shapes. <clears throat> yeah, they really are. And I mean, beautifully done. It's Yeah, I don't have much to say about the lighting on that one, so let's move on. <clears throat> Here, you know, actually, if you look at this, this is just above it on the same page. This example here, I think this arm is nowhere near as effective. I mean, it's... it's yeah, yeah. 
And it's one cut that's making that not work. It's that cut all the way through down into the forearm. Yeah. So it's overlapping it over that forearm, which really flattens that. Yeah. And it's it's just that one little thing. If you, I wonder if he was trying to accentuate the stretch in grabbing his baton. I I'm sure. You know what? I'm I'm sure that's probably exactly what he was doing. And it has that stretch, but yeah, I that's one little thing can really make something a little bit, you know, yeah. not yeah. as strong. Here, I, look, I hope it doesn't seem like I'm, I'm criticizing Joe Casada's work here because it's really not what I want to be doing. Um, but I, I think you have to, you know, for yourself, you have to look critically at whatever it is that you're looking at. So we moved on. Okay. This is where I'm at. Uh, oh, dear. Which one? I think I, I'm going to say, is it the next issue? I'm not sure. I think, yeah, I, I think it's just a little bit further. Keep going. Oh, you passed it. Oh, I did? Yeah. Yeah, you were like, it was the next page from where you were, and then it kept uh, There. This one, this one? That one. I don't want to do the whole figure. I just want to do the legs. Oh, okay. Whew. Actually, I don't know why I'm so happy. It's super difficult. <laughs> All right. Because look at that. Thanks. And uh, drawing legs like that, very, very difficult. And he's done some really strange things here and there. Like some of the shapes are, I'm going to just say, they're different than what I would do. Yeah. But it works really well, especially when you look at it upside down. Look at how well that works. So yeah. let's give it a try. BA says criticizing perhaps. Yeah, I know, I know. But look, I, I don't think that you can look at any artist anywhere and you have to make your own judgment calls about what works for them and what works for you. And look, I mean, there are a million things and you know, uh, artists could do. Uh, and first of all, no one's doing studies of my art this way. So there's a, that's another thing. But if somebody did, you could find probably a lot more. I think there's a lot of people doing studies of your work all the time. I think it's evident. And there's a lot of people that are, are trying to crack that code, I guess, trying to see how you do things. Well, it's, yeah, it's all stuff like this. I'll tell you that. Okay, so here's my, um, my pelvis. Yeah, this is a... <laughs> I've got a really, um, here's uh, holes for my legs. I'm just going to start them there. I'm looking at the pelvis almost from the bottom here. Um, and I draw the hips and here's my hip bone. I don't actually really do any of that. It's too much work. But I really like that he's got his legs are take up this kind of a shape on the inside. I'm going to just really exaggerate that for right now. His knee here, lower leg here. And it goes all the way through to his foot. Like it, it has a nice curve all the way down to the base of that foot. Okay, the whole time I'm trying to draw it the way I would normally. Um, yeah, the same thing you notice with the biceps happening here, Dave. So it's def I mean it's definitely intentional. It's yeah. yeah, oh yeah, it's it's definitely intentional. Yeah. All right. So I'm just trying to work with like really big broad shapes right now because that's really the kind of the point of this and then we can start to to work inside those shapes. And you can see I drew just simple lines and my leg is going to flow all the way through, all the way to the foot on both sides. Let me get this out of my way here. Story by Osmosis says, I happen to be doing a definch. Uh, Walking Dead Deluxe 18 study this week. Well, that's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Alex Owen says, it seems that you were uh, pretty careful not to say it's wrong, and that's very good of you. At the end of the day, it takes real imagination to, to just break the rules and make it work. Yeah. You know what? Because it isn't wrong. It's um, not wrong. Um, and yeah, it, I don't want to say it because it's not wrong. And this could all be done. He could just be photographing 
a figure in this position and putting it up there. What makes this so amazing is these kinds of interpretations and it's like a heightened reality, um, not more realistic, but uh, creative in a way. That's what really excites me about this kind of artwork. I remember Carrie Nord said to me at a convention one time I was talking to him about something I had drawn and <clears throat> what he said to me at the time was I was so focused on anatomy yeah. that, I was that I was losing the dynamics of the figure. And he said it's better to have <clears throat> a dynamic figure than accurate anatomy. And I'm not saying this anatomy is wrong. I'm just saying that you can bend what he, what he was trying to say to me was you can bend the anatomy as much as you want as long as you don't lose the dynamics of the figure. Yeah. If your figure is dynamic, you've won. That's why, you know, I mean, look, even even Jack Kirby, I mean, amazing artist. Every, I mean, we all love him to death, of course. But, you know, there's there's some things I don't understand with the, anat with the anatomy there, but it's so dynamic that you don't really care about that, you know? Yeah. It, yeah, it's it not the point of his art. It right. never was. Um, and, yeah. And, and so criticizing it on that level is not fair because it's just not what it was about. Right. Now, Joe Posada's work, his anatomy is actually incredibly strong and accurate and where he's making these kinds of choices, it's, um, it's a deliberate choice. And I, look, I can disagree here and there, but the, I'm not Joe Quesada. And the point of doing this is not for me to become Joe Quesada. And I think that you really should never be trying to become any artist. The point is to, uh, pick up all the things that you think really work and that make sense for you. Okay. So let me lighten this down. How many other artists could I even find where I could find figures like this? So people just don't draw this. David, you've, um, you've mentioned before too, that, that your, your advice to folks wanting to draw like you is not to, you know, just look at your work for reference because there's, there's stuff that, you know, they might be picking up from you. You know what I mean? It's yep. better to broaden your net and to, like you said, pick up those things that you want to from one artist and, you know, pick up something you like from another. Anyway, I think we've beaten that horse today. Yes. But it is true. <clears throat> this is a really difficult angle for me to draw feet. <laughs> I'm going to say that. It's a struggle. I think I spent more time trying to get these feet to work just now than the whole rest of it. Yeah. Like the legs, yeah, fine. The feet, mm, it's tough. So you know what I'm going to do? I, uh, and I do think he's kind of done that here. But it's occurring to me, I've got this kind of a shape coming out like this. It's similar to what I was talking about here. I'm going to curve that in like that. And I just love it. I love how he does that. Yeah, again, his overlapping shapes here are just fantastic. That's what yeah. sells it. Yeah. He pushes one form above the other, and then as it recedes in perspective, he, he bunches it up. He, he pushes the anatomy up. And you see the same thing over here, even on the, on the thigh muscle here. Generally, that's very low on the leg, you know, it's very low by the kneecap. Yeah. But when you tilt, when you tilt it, it's very, it's very high up. This um, this curve over here, this muscle, and that's what sells the perspective. So here's a problem that he's facing with these legs, and it's interesting to see how he's dealing with it. The knees are on top of everything else; like they really sit higher. And so, if I was to do this, draw this, so here's my knee, and here's my lower leg, and the lower leg overlaps over the knee, it is totally wrong. But you want forms that are in front to overlap. And there's no, I don't know, I've struggled with this more than once where I've had a figure and that overlap, like this overlaps over this. But my rule that I always use is the things that are in front uh, or closer to us are gonna overlap the things that are behind. So it's a problem. And you can see he's got that going on here. That knee is in front of that, it has to be. So I'm going to try to draw some of the way he's he's defined his his anatomy here. It's very much 
lit directly. I want to say downward lit. It's it would be upward lit because I've turned this picture over. But his his lighting and shadows is so advanced. I'm yeah. I uh, yeah. It's you know you understand it is uh it's hard. And the command that he has over it here is just insane. Because he knows to separate this dark. Huh, no, no one can see. He knows to separate the um, the kneecap, or the knee shadow from the calf shadow. If he didn't, it would be it would be hard to know what's going on there. Yep. Yeah, and that's where you know there's there's understanding anatomy, and and lighting, and you know you can do it in a very methodical kind of a way, but to really really do it well, you need to be um worrying about what's going to describe the form the best and so if you have a, a any lighting that might be technically correct but it hurts the reading the figure it, it you're better off to like carrie nord said you know you need to make that decision yeah carrie nord who, carrie nord who has phenomenal anatomy by the way yeah man his paintings wow yeah i have a conan by him original yeah nice i have uh um it's a headshot and it's oh, i love it yeah his his conan is really nice even this muscle here he's got this one coming in and kind of curving up and then this muscle really kind of connects in like this really interesting and is really different than i would how i would draw like look at i love it i could not have done that on my own j pencil art says the for sure uh, for shortening on that figure really accentuates the falling awayness of the character uh it's just a figure alone has enough drama. But yeah, it really does. Now, I mean, I'm kind of bent over. So unfortunately, I'm not showing the, the original. You know, I, I bet you he drew this and you know fast, like so fast and moved on. You know. Uh oh, I'm sure. Yeah. And here, here we're like trying to break it down into what you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, and this is the thing too. These things are you know, when when you're drawing, you're breaking things down and you're understanding it. But the more you do it, the more a lot of it really just becomes automatic. Uh, yeah. Really amazing figure. Glad we stopped and did that one. Well, the legs, anyway. The top is great, too, but it's a little more obscured. So, And we're already at 1018. Time is going too fast, Eric. Yeah. I'm going to move on to another piece of paper. I love these teeth, man. Oh, I know. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. I can do every figure. This is a problem. Yeah. There's just so much. What did I have next? I mean, look at that. Yeah. This is such a good book, by the way, for anyone who hasn't read it. If you haven't read it, wow, first of all. And uh, go fix that problem and go pick it up. It's a great yep. book. Uh, hold on. <laughs> Someone's knocking on my door. You're going to have to take over for a minute, Eric. Sure. Sorry for the glare. Mm. All right, I'm back. All right. Yeah, All it's right. like, what do, you, what do you choose? There's so much good stuff. There is. I wanted to do this figure here. Uh, okay. Derek Stanley says no ash. Yeah, you know, there's another one. The problem is there are so many books that are so absolutely incredible. Okay? It's very difficult to pick one. Uh, one thing about Ash, I would say, though, is he's got, um, for any of you that aren't familiar, Ash is Joe Quesada and Jimmy Palmiotti's character they did before Marvel Knights and before he, Marvel Knights was Joe Quesada, 
taking over a whole segment of the Marvel universe for Marvel. Um, and then that led into him becoming editor in chief. So Ash is his own creator own character. He's kind of a fighter fighter. His whole upper body, the arms are exposed, but the upper body is, is kind of covered by fabric. So it's not really as useful as Daredevil just for that reason. But I mean, you know, some of my favorite stuff. And actually, I I met Joe Casada from doing Ash. I, I was drawing Cyberforce. This is years and years ago when I was first starting, and Ash um, I crossed over with Cyberforce, and that's how I met Joe Casada doing that. So, okay. So I've got my upper body here. I, I didn't even draw an opening for my my arm. I probably should have, but what my arm connecting through here. This hand, again, he is so incredible with hands. I would not have drawn the hand like this. He's actually got the hand dangling. So in this is really, I think if, if I were to take a picture and stand there and, and see how my hands are actually resting, it would be rested like this. Yeah. Weight is pushing down through his, his index. That is the index finger, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Neither of us know what finger is what, but whatever. And it just, it really gives it, it's not intended. This isn't intended to be a really dynamic pushed figure, but even just that little touch there, it's like a dancer where every element of the body just works to make the figure smooth. And he's got a nice line. This is similar to a figure we did earlier where there's a line that really goes through the whole figure all the way through down like this. And so I want to get that. And you can see I lost it here. I wasn't really doing that. <clears throat> He's pulling his shoulders back a lot. Something I'm going to have to fix here. Yeah. And the reason being is he's leaning back. Yeah, this isn't, it's a figure that's just standing, but the reason why it has so much power is just that overall flow through the figure. It's really, that's why I wanted to do this one. It's really amazing. I think neutral poses can man, be some of the hardest sometimes. They can be, yeah. I don't know what it is. Especially figures like this where it really relies on weight. Because there's weight pushing down through the figure, and you can really feel it. I'm still not leaning him back far, far enough. Ah, such a great figure. I mean, look at that, just in simple form, you know? And I'm sure I, I lost elements of what he had that really made this figure strong. Yeah, that hand is legit. Yeah, it really is. All right. You're beating me on this one for sure. It's a tough one. Even the, yeah, again, these neutral poses can. Uh, <clears throat> really be tricky. Derek Stanley says in his aerial, and I was going to say, no, it's that, but he caught it in the next one, Azrael. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Derek, um, we both, Eric and I, wanted to do Azrael. And I, it's been my book of the week before. Yeah, we're only not doing it because I couldn't find my copy. I don't know where it is. I'll see if I can um, grab mine and get that picture of the legs that I was mentioning, which is so good. Yeah, you know what? If you can put it up, we can both draw from it. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So, I'll I'll speed a bit through this one, and oh, I just caught something. I thought I thought this was his back, but it's not. Yeah, now I, a, this is his belt. So, yeah, I I know that 
his arm is actually covering the his back and i still kind of had mine in a little bit and i think i'm going to leave it that way because i like it but yeah he, it's not how he has it i really you know what i'm going to try it his way oh yeah and it's really easy to look at at uh you know different artists and say ah you know what i want to just do it my way because i i think it looks better mm, until you try it yeah, see he's, uh, dave he's done that here again which just shows the this tendon yeah that's he really likes to make sure that um his limbs are, are like uh, taut or stretching or yeah okay. yeah he, yeah he, it's crazy dude yeah and it's all coming from his pelvis you know stretching all the way to the to the foot The thing that I mentioned earlier that I struggle with. Even here, you can see the the shin is not totally flat. There's a there's a bit of a curve there. There's a muscle on the sh that's riding the shin bone. Yeah, it's not good to draw it just hundred percent flat. Now, I, I would say um, that's nowhere near as exaggerated. That's much more yeah. uh, natural. Yeah. than the other time where it was more of an exaggerated form yeah his lighting here is so different than what i would do so it's gonna be i i think i kind of want to try it why don't you put your oh you don't want to put your spin on it like no said. the yeah. point is that yeah i, I yeah. want to try it and if there's places where i just can't reconcile then that is what it is but yeah, I want to see what I can kind of get out of it. And I do think it's it's just really easy to kind of pre prejudice yourself against uh, trying something you think, ah, it's not how I would do it. I don't like it as much. But until you try it, mm, it's hard yeah. to say. I love the way he forms his knees, too. Yeah. I'd be to yeah, totally lost there, generally. Let's get that foot in there. Man, he does amazing feet. As an artist that can't draw feet, I always appreciate artists that can. Really nice. All right. Even his other hand here, dang. <coughs> this horrible cough, I'm sorry. Well, that's good, actually. What's that? It means we're not going to miss Meredith as much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that hand's way too big. I drew it too big. Let me fix that. The thumb was too big. There we go. Close enough. Well, and uh, spending so much time on the thumb. I don't want to spend too much time on the face. I love the face, but it's not what we're doing right now. Just enough to get it established in there. All right, I think I'm, I'm ready to start trying some of his lighting. J Pencil Art says, uh, um, as a response, he says, I hope I'm not overstepping or being too forward by answering. Uh, but I found that drawing fleshed out stick figures like the Loomis mannequin helps get proportions right. And he says that in answer to, and I missed it, unfortunately. Shoot. I think is tracing a comic book panel a good way to learn from uh, from or form and practice strong comic art. Uh, no, I don't think tracing it will teach you anything. Okay, you really need to make these. You need to work with with form. So 
all of these things, I'm trying to, this is a, a relatively flat figure to the page. So it's a little tougher to see, but you know, if I draw, uh, well, like a, a leg coming out towards you, I'm drawing that as a form in space. There's the upper leg, my knee is, you know, like this, my lower leg. And you need to be able to think in terms of, of 3D shapes that you're locking together to make your figures or make anything really. I mean, that's the basis of drawing. And so if you're tracing, you're not learning any of that. All right, here we go. So he's got a core shadow on this one, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna start here. I like how he, his angular type lighting. Uh, I'm gonna ignore, he's got a bit of a cast shadow from this thing above him. I'm gonna ignore that, but. And this is where, even if his lighting is something that I don't really completely understand, <clears throat> the shapes that he uses, I can get so much out of. <laughs> Jim Klein, Dave, can you walk us through the thought process when you're doing the spot blacks on this? I always struggle with bold shadows like this. Well, this is, uh, we're trying um, Joe's lighting. Yes. And, uh, so, yeah, my process would be a little bit different. This is, uh, it's definitely a different look. Um, so uh, what I really like about this is he's got this great angled form here. And then he's, I, I really like these kinds of shapes where it's. Just that's, it looks anatomical. It looks good, but it just looks really dynamic. Um, and he uses those kinds of shapes everywhere. And so I, I feel like for me, that's what I can really get out of this. Now, I wouldn't personally, I wouldn't draw a line all the way down through that. I'm going to do it. I yeah. know it's not the way that I would approach it normally, but it's not the point. And actually, I think it'd be interesting to to be as accurate with this as I can, and then maybe make some changes based on how I would do it and see where, I, where it would be different. And you do need to, I mean, I've said it how many times now, but it's it's just such a part of learning is you need to learn anatomy and then from there you need to um uh, learn style and and the more artists you look at the more contradictions you'll have all right I really like how he's connected these shapes here. Let's see if I can get that. So he's got a shape here. And then he's got, it's like a, a muscle cutting in here, but he's not drawing the muscle. He's just drawing these muscles coming up to it. Really nice. like that a lot, actually. All right. So he's dark all through here. This is really tough. It is. Yeah. And even so, like, there are still some things I'm just going to ignore. Like, this in here, I don't understand it. And so I'm not going to do it because I truly don't understand. His chest is dark through here, but then he's got a bit of a bounce light underneath. Um, and so he's left that light there. And this is where I'm, I love Azrael, but it's inked by Kevin Nolan. And a lot of this kind of really interesting, some of the shapes that he uses, uh, Kevin Nolan, uh, adjusted the anatomy and the lighting to be a little bit more the way that he would do it. That's the way he inks. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna move on to the legs here because it's really what I kind of wanted to cover. So I've got 
a muscle here. I've got my, this is like a, the triceps of the leg. Who knows what quadriceps is what it's called. And, uh, it's a tendon that runs through here. He's got that really accentuated all the way down through. Um, and so this muscle he's defining like this. And then, uh, the muscle behind just like this. And there's a, a muscle that connects in through here, which he's he's got just like this. So this isn't random lighting, even places where I don't totally understand that it's very much based in proper anatomy. And nothing makes me happier when I'm looking at somebody's artwork than being able to say, okay, that's that's this muscle working and that's this muscle. Look, I like to understand it because then I know I can repeat it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This, uh, even this here, uh, even the tendon here on the inner leg that goes into the, into the calf muscle, the way he's got it rendered there. Yeah. I'm just going to dark on that. <clears throat> And this tendon, he's actually got lit on both sides. So it's it's lit from the front and the back. It's all one shape, though. It goes all the way down. It's crazy. It's amazing how much you can stylize. Like his anatomy is is very accurate, and yet it's so stylized. Uh, it, and I've I, this is my first time I've actually really played with a lot of this lighting. Um, I get different things from different artists, so I've never really tried this. Should have done this years ago. Yeah, there's definitely a lot to be learned here. Now with his other leg, he's got this muscle coming up here. There's a a large, um, a long, thin muscle that comes in there. So he's ended it there where that muscle hits. Uh, and then behind that muscle, he's got a shape here. And then his knee. And I could even put another little shape in there and that's gonna be the same kind of muscle as this one if I wanted to, it's not necessary. And I don't know that it added, but I put it in. I don't think it added actually. So there you go. There's there's kind of my version of his lighting. It's so different, especially on, on this figure. It's... <clears throat> Let's see if I can get that book real quick. <clears throat> Excuse me a second. Jim Klein says a bit you mentioned not understanding under the right arm looks like a rim light on the posterior side of his obliques and is his gluteus medius on an iliotobial band. Speaking Greek over here. Yeah, now I understood. I'm going to say uh, some of that. Like definitely obliques, yeah, that would be through here, and it is. That is a light on his obliques. So yeah, you're definitely right, and up and through here. Um, so I probably really should, and you can see actually me taking that out of there really weaken the figure. It does not look great, <laughs> but we're gonna go ahead and move on. <laughs> look at that. Yeah. <clears throat> but that's not the one I was thinking of. Uh, is there more than one volume of this? Um, What's the bet I have? Wrong no, one? you've got the whole book. It's It was four comics. And uh, this... Oh, yeah, look at that. That's crazy. It is. 
I, unfortunately, honestly, you're blurry enough that I don't know. That we well, can... yeah, it's because I'm holding it close to the camera. Oh, I see. Um, it's a very small picture. I mean, look at that. Amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Those are I've I've drawn those a few times. Yeah. Look at that. That's insane. Both of these legs. You know what? Let's do those. <laughs> do, you to, do you want to snap a picture? I can't. Um or I don't know how. Let me see. Do you have your phone on you? Can you just keep it so like oh are you taking you know, it away? You know what? Why don't you go ahead and draw it and I'll see if I can draw it after you've uh okay. all right. Okay, don't move. So I'm gonna draw the, the figure in, first of all, like his chest. Because I mean the whole figure is is really strong. And by the way, even in some of his costume, you can actually see some of the sorts of shapes that I was really talking about. So yeah. here's a shape for here's a hole for his neck. His head's gonna connect directly onto that. And I like the Loomis cutting in uh, like this, and he's really done that with his uh with the lines of his costume. And then I tend to use a ball. And so that's really what he's got here too. It's amazing how much really good costume design just uh, flatters the natural shapes of the figure. His pelvis is here. Now this anatomy, by the way, is Joe Casada with a layer of, um, Kevin Nolan over it. This is Kevin Nolan's inks, and he tends to be a very uh, heavy-handed inker. Uh, I think in a good way, but it does mean that what you're seeing is is not entirely Joe Quesada. It's it's a mixture. But I, I think it's such an incredible mixture. So here's my knee here. And I, I think doing this knee too, Eric, is, is really good because... Uh, this is so much when I, I draw um, legs at this angle. This mm -hmm. is what I'm looking at all the time. I have been for years. Yeah, so. That's great. <clears throat> Again, like you mentioned, it has that like Frazetta shadow here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he really does. Now his other leg is coming out this way. And because it's Kevin Nolan lighting, and so much of my lighting is really heavily based on Kevin Nolan, I actually understand it easier. Now, it's Joe Casada lighting, but interpreted through Kevin Nolan. So I I've, have always found that the lighting in Azrael is something easier for me to get my head around. I see Tomic's really enjoying the stream. <laughs> yeah, I've seen Tomic's study Casada quite a bit. I've actually seen some Casada shining through in Tomic's work, so that's great to see. And it's really proof positive in studying artists, and then you you start picking that up, and uh, you kind of absorb it, and uh, definitely see it with him. Yeah. He said he's, re he's referenced this before without knowing it's Casada, so he's uh, he's geeking out a bit. That's kind of cool. <laughs> All right. Book name says Jaspreet Singh. It is uh, Sort of Azrael by Joe Quesada, Kevin Nolan, and I don't know who wrote it. Or at least I don't. Uh, I'll, I'll go back to the page. It's this one. The cover is uh, Dennis O'Neill. Dennis O'Neill. All right. Yeah. Dennis O'Neill, a uh, longtime editor for Batman and longtime writer. And, uh, a legend passed away um, a few years ago. Okay. Um, so the first thing that I want to do, I'm going to just go ahead and place that knee. And I'm going to draw it as a shadow. I tend to do this. So I'm just going to do it the way that I would do it. Uh, instead of drawing the form, I always end up drawing it as, as a shadow. Sharpen my pencil too much and it breaks. Hold on. 
I always end up drawing it as, as a shadow shape. And it's it's totally, it's from um, Frazetta, but it's actually my, the way that I draw up my knees and that kind of thing are more actually from Joe Quesada. And to me, looking at this, like this shape coming up through here, I love it. It's very subtle here. And I have a feeling Joe Quesada had something a little bit more um, defined and Kevin Nolan softened things here and there, which I, it's, it's just my assumption though. I haven't seen the pencils. The inside head of the quadriceps here. I love the way the shading is broken up at the bottom because of the smoke. So good. Even yeah. this, foot, this foot over here as well. That's crazy cool. Yeah, uh, ever since uh, Mike Vignola, especially Mike Vignola is, using that technique was fairly fresh at the time. It was new, so a lot of people were using it. And this to me makes sense. This shape here, I'm kind of doing an inside curve out and then this way, and it goes thicker here because the light is above. And so this curves away from the light a little bit more. And then here, this goes thicker because it's away from the light. It just, this is more the way that Kevin Nolan lights things. Uh, and I know this is very much based on, on Joe Quesada's lighting also, but the way that he interprets Joe Quesada, yeah. I, I know I wouldn't want to try and suggest for a second that uh, if I were to ink Joe Quesada, I would be able to do anything like this, but it fits my head better. That makes sense. Yeah. Javier Justicia says Quesada is like Madera and Ramos combined. Yep. Oh, I can see that. There's definitely influences here. But his his earliest work to me is very very heavily based in Kevin Nolan or um, Mike Mignola. You can really see it. I mean, he wears it on his sleeve in his uh, his some of his first work, and uh, then he he started being influenced by you know some of the um, image artists, and you can see that kind of coming in, and um, and then you know like so many artists that are are that level of just natural you know genius i would say uh so much of it uh, who knows where he got it because i've never seen an, art an artist do anything like what he does and this shape in here this is a few different muscles kind of playing together really though i'm just drawing it as a, a cool kind of a shape in there and again this is where i find doing tutorials sometimes very difficult because so much of my anatomy is based on these sorts of shapes. Yeah, uh, I yeah, I can see this one in, like it's just flowing out of your pencil here for sure. Yeah, it just it feels right to me. It just feels natural. Yeah. yeah. And it's because I've uh, been looking at this stuff for years. And then here, let's do the fade out. Yeah, it's so cool. There we go. I really like that. We're dark in here. We need to fade the other one too. Yep. When you get there. So now for this leg, it's uh, it's pretty angular. So straight here. For the overall shape of the leg, I've been doing this for so many years. That's a it feels pretty natural. But you can see, I mean, it, this is the way that I would always do it, and it really conforms with that leg. And again, it's because that's what I've been looking at. I would say sort of Azriel and uh, some of his earlier work, especially because, you know, this is the stuff that was out when I was uh, learning. Um, I go back to every couple of years, I'll end up just going back and studying it again. So I've got the inside head of the quadriceps here, the long tendon kind of muscle here that has a name, who knows. 
And then there are a bunch of little muscles that all kind of connect in here. I don't know what any of them do, where they go. I don't care. And I'm never going to learn it. I refuse because I don't need to. The point is that there are just some cool connecting muscles. And you can see I got it all from Joe Quesada. Uh, look at the forearm in, in the figure just above. Yeah, very, very similar. It's just cool connecting shapes. And you don't need to know every little muscle. Here's the middle head of the quadriceps. It's kind of two muscles. I think that's why they call it a quadriceps. I don't know. Don't quote me. But there you go. So I'm going to lighten that down and then just get into lighting. <clears throat> this whole muscle here, very rarely would do you see it. Um, uh, really heavily defined. And I love how Kevin Nolan did that. And I should fix mine to try and capture that a little bit more. It's just fading this one out into line and then flowing into the other muscle a little bit, as opposed to doing what I did there, which is a little stronger. <laughs> Alex Owens. On a related note, David, it seems you've improved your anat anatomical vocabulary since the Norman workshop. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I mean, trying to have a YouTube channel and explain some of the stuff, it has taught me some things. I'll say that. Um, I've had to learn a few things. But there you go. I mean, that's... Uh, yeah, let me just finish out the knee here. It's kind of obscured in the original, but I know how I would approach it just from... Um, and this was all dark. So yeah, I think it's actually, it's really good that we, uh... oh, by the way, my legs are too close together. So it looks a little weird. Yeah, I mean, true. that is a pretty extreme pose as it is, you yeah. know? Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, but yeah, that, that's a question I, I get quite a bit. Is a leg coming towards you bent like that? How do you do it? Well, yeah, that's... Uh, right, right here, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's right there. Just studies of, of that kind of stuff. And that's how I learned. I mean, I wish I could say, you know... Yeah. Well, I, you know, I don't even wish I could say this is how I learned it is yeah. just doing those sorts of studies. And I, I can tell you that the first couple of times I tried to draw that leg or legs like it, it was really difficult. And after a while, you start getting much more of a feel for it. It just gets much easier. I love this too. Yeah, yeah, those hands are great. <clears throat> All right, I think we have time for one more. Okay. Go back to Daredevil. <clears throat> Yeah. All right. All right. So I'm thinking either this figure here. There's so many. There comes a point that, like, I really want to make sure that I'm not doing something that's too similar. Like this arm here. You remember the very first figure that we did had that happening. And you can see, like, you could very quickly say, like, you could easily say mm -hmm. that's really weird. And who would ever draw an arm like that? Yeah. When yeah. you look at the figure, it looks great. And it just feels great. And it's because he's, it, this is an animation technique that he's using. And it's a conscious choice. Um, but I feel like drawing that figure is similar to what we had already done. Yeah. I did have all this planned out, believe it or not. <laughs> all right, I'm just going to do this figure because it's different than what we've been doing. So. How far was that? Uh, let's see. Maybe 
Henry, no spoilers. I'm uh, halfway through the race. I, I was at a convention all weekend, so I've seen the qualifying. I've seen the sprint race. I'm halfway through the actual race. It was a good race. All right. Uh, you know, let me adjust my camera again for whatever. I, it, it's light sensitive, and I wish with these stupid webcams that you could there. Just get them to set and just stop trying to fix things for you. Okay. You ready? I'm still trying to find the page. It's really toward the back. Okay. The end. It's the last page of issue seven. I don't know if that helps. It'd be nice if the pages were numbered. Yeah, they're not numbered. I got it. Okay, got it. All right. So I'm going to draw my. Uh, yeah, the back. <laughs> My neck is going to be here, uh, so. Uh, and full disclosure, I rarely draw backs without looking at reference. I, and I mean photo reference. If it's a, there are some ways of drawing backs, like there's some angles. And if it's, you know, if it's done a certain way, I can do it. But for the most part, backs are um, really difficult to get looking right. And I don't know many artists at all that, that, can, um, that can do it just. It's just one of those things we don't look at much, uh, yeah. you know. And I, I've got my basic. So here's the way that I would do a back. And I'm going to just sketch this in. So I've got my center uh, muscle like this. And I, I kind of have no choice really but to do this a little bit because yeah. um, I just can't understand it any other way. My deltoids are going to connect like this. And then I'm just going to draw a simple shape for my um, shoulder blade, just like that. It doesn't need to be anything too special. And then this is going to, uh, these are. Who knows what these muscles are, but they're the lower back muscles and they go right there. Jim Klein has a $15 super chat and he says, I'm always blown away with how versatile Quasad is. I realize that interiors and covers are different beasts, but there's such a style difference between what we see here and his Wolverine origin covers. Yeah, and even his Wolverine origin covers and the work that he does now, and you can really see it's an evolution and he's an artist that's not afraid to, um, to push in whatever direction he feels is right. Uh, yeah, he's he's truly an incredible artist. Okay, so um, because this leg here is the one that's supporting the ground, um, I'm going to kick that hip up, which is how he's got it. And so I end up with that, basically. And then, um, so that would be my, my um, hip bone there. And then my leg comes in there just like this. In this leg, there's my hip bone here. Uh, comes out like this. And we'll I'll work with his forms a little bit more. His forms here are really great and they're better than mine. So what I'm doing is kind of putting it in the way that I understand and then we'll try and use what he's got to see if we can make it better. Just about like that. And I think I'm a little long with the legs. So let's just fix that. OK. Uh, Mr. Hijack says, I think it's because some physiques have more pronounced traps. As well, uh, the back, even when fairly lean, it doesn't have a lot of true lines. It's shadows. I feel like, yeah, it, it's true. It's it's a very, um, it's it's not really heavily defined with with clear planes. Also, because the uh, shoulder blades have so much movement, it, it can really really alter the 
there's, there's just so many layers of, of muscles in the back too. And, yeah. and all of them stretch and contract and contort and to try and render the, you know, surface render that is really a challenge. It is. And, you know, so much of, of drawing backs for me is his ears are really low here, I think. But whatever. <laughs> Not going to worry about it. Um, it's it's learning just enough to be able to interpret photographs and reference well. Okay, so I've got my deltoid coming out here, very hard shapes. And it's all, I mean, everything is completely angular so far here. Gonna bring his hips down just a little bit. I was a little high. And to me, uh, his back, a lot of what he's got going on there, uh, doesn't actually look like back muscles. Yeah. It looks like he's just struggling with that. He's having some fun with shapes. And he does it so well, and those shapes work so well that it works, even though it's it's very odd. All right, so for the buttocks, again, very, very angular. This is, it really reminds me of um, some uh, early Mike Vignola. going a little quiet as I'm just kind of yeah. interpreting my stuff here. And uh, this should be lower than this. So let me fix that. And then <clears throat> it was the opposite. And I have to remind myself of that constantly. I never seem to just naturally remember it. And here he's got basically a straight line here. I'm going to give it that little inside curve there. I just really like it. I think I'm doing it more than he would now. I don't care. It looks great. I'm going to start doing that all the time. <laughs> Which one's that? I right here. I, I didn't just draw that straight down. Oh yeah, I yeah. Kind of curved it in this way, and I just really like how that looks. So I'm going to start using it in my own art. <clears throat> I didn't tilt, tilt my pelvis enough. I think for the same reason you were mentioning earlier, the one leg is bent, so all the weight is shifting this way. His feet are covered, so notice how my feet are getting all like sloppy. <laughs> I can't draw feet, guys. What do you want? All right. There we go. It's a little better. <clears throat> all right. JDSCT says, definitely going to have to go back and watch this from the beginning later. Yeah, well, uh, hopefully it, it works now. Well, let's draw this figure. And then I, I kind of want to talk about it just a little bit. So um, he's got a line across the, the back, which I think is really, really effective and has the added bonus of not having to draw the back, or at least that much of it. If it were me, I think I would have shattered all the way down to the leg <laughs> or used reference, which... If this wasn't a live stream, I'll tell you right now, I would be going through my reference folder and find, finding something that works. Because I find it very, very difficult just creating 
uh, back anatomy. But as it is, I'm going to do my best because I can't use what he has. I don't know about you, Eric, but it's yeah, it's, really. it's it's clearly to me it's just it's really cool anatomical shapes. I can't make that work. I could make that work. I like that little. <clears throat> Generally, this part of the back would be in, sh in shadow, the lower Which, back. Yeah, well, not necessarily. If there's, if yeah. there's shadow here, then there's, you know, you know what I mean? Because right, if the back is like because this, the chest does this. Right, and this is your back here, and your head's here. Yeah. Yeah, this yeah. whole area would shadow out. Um, it certainly could, yeah. But I'm not going to try to do that. <laughs> Well, you know what? I'll try it. Let me get the rest of the lighting just kind of. So it's, and you can see he's got that here. This is angled away because the light's coming from above. So that's thicker here. Then it goes thin here and then thicker here. And obviously this is much bigger because it's a larger form. I'm going to put a cape on mine. How about that? Yeah, well, yeah, I think this is where capes came from. <laughs> And then he went totally dark here. I really like how he's interpreted that. And the fact that he's gone totally dark with this leg kicks it forward. That's it, just using shadow to um, really push that leg forward underneath him. That shadow that's running across his back is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, because it, it it's wrapping around the form of the bat. It's not yeah. just it's not just a flat line. Uh, yeah, you can't do that. It, yeah, and the, and, yeah, and the way that it's that it's covering the uh, the muscle here and then falling on the tricep is so cool. Yeah, I really like how he's defining his calves mm -hmm. here. Uh, this line coming from the calf, I don't really. Oh, the one in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't do that personally, but. All right, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and try and uh, finish the back in a way that makes sense for me and we'll see if I can make it work or not. And uh, I'll do the same. I'll probably mess it all up. Now I'm doing the same thing he did, by the way. I'm just starting to throw some kind of shapes in there. There you go. That's going to be <laughs> without looking at anything. Yeah, I hate to admit how little I know about so much of anatomy. But it's the truth. Yeah, Bex is definitely the super, super tricky. Yeah. Hey, yours looks pretty good. You know, and actually, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat even more. Then you got to make it non-symmetrical and then, then it gets really really hard all right there we go good enough <laughs> that's gonna be my my best attempt i wish it were better but yeah i think it's for me it's it's a great figure i love how his legs look um how he's he's used his his shape so uh yeah that's it for me um I, i'm gonna say though i just want to talk quickly about kind of what i got out of this and hopefully you guys are, are trying this yourselves um, because you really don't get anywhere near as much just watching. So I do hope that you guys are, are drawing along and, and seeing what you get out of it yourself. It's going to be uh, different for everyone, I think. You know, there are the things that, that I've been talking about and that you've been talking about, Eric. But um, for me, I, my number one favorite thing that I got really is I've got a form here. And then instead of just cutting down like this, I'm going to reverse that curve 
And I can use that absolutely everywhere. The amount of places on a figure I can make that work, it's endless. And I think it's really going to make a difference, like a visual difference in my work. I'm very excited about just using that more. Um, so that's that's really uh, number one. Um, and Shoot, I was going to say, I forgot what my other one was. Oh, the, the other thing that I really got out of this for myself is the lower leg. So I'm when I'm drawing my leg here, I've, I've got now my knee here. This is my upper leg. And then for the lower leg, instead of drawing a ball, which is how I've been doing it. Uh, and so here's an awful leg, obviously. But uh, I'm going to start trying to draw more of a, a diamond shape. I really like how that that interprets for me. And then um, he's got the, the boot just down here, just below that shape. And I just, I felt like that really worked just as a, a shape to work with. <clears throat> so those are the two really big things for me that I, I kind of got out of this and I think I'm going to be carrying forward. So Eric, any uh, any thoughts about what you, you got out of this? Oh yeah. Um... Kind of what you mentioned earlier, the this line over here, and there's no definition there. Yeah, and it helps carry the, you know, carry the power from here. And I know, I know you've kind of mentioned that before. Um, you can almost draw a line this way. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And right through all the, the definition here just makes it so dynamic. Yeah, it really does. And, and then, he, sorry. sorry. What was it? No, no, I was just agreeing. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, no worries. And then also with the hand, um, the same kind of things happening here. You see all the definition here where it needs to be because you're defining the knuckles. And then you have the soft curve here again. And then you have all the definition here again. Yeah. It just makes the hand so, uh, again, dynamic. Yes. Uh, and actually, that hand for me is, is very Mike Magnola. Uh, yeah. And then... Also, again, the the way the shin is not just you know from you know from the knee. It's not just a flat line here. Yeah. There's a bit of a. So I'm going to start implementing that for sure. Yeah, it looked better even just right there the minute you did that. Yeah. So yeah, um, and you know, hopefully, all of you guys that that try this, and hopefully, that's a lot of you guys will find uh, things that you'll get out of it. Uh, if you're looking at Joe Casada, there are so many different things to pick from. So you certainly don't have to do the figures that we were doing. I really recommend uh, trying a bunch of different figures and different artists. I really recommend looking at Joe Casada, though. He is uh, such an absolute master. There's so much that you can get from it. And uh, hopefully for Tomic Art, he found some things about Joe Casada's anatomy that, that made sense. Uh, I know he was saying that he has trouble with some of making some of it make sense. Um, and I think any artist that's very interpretive that way is 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 going to be a little different to to get the hang of. So, yeah, uh, that's it for this one. Um, so, on behalf of of uh, me and uh, Eric, thank you everyone for coming and watching our Joe Casada study study stream. Um, this is a lot of fun for me. Hopefully, you had a good time, Eric. Oh yeah, absolutely. Paul right. Paul has fun. So much to learn. Yeah. All right. Well, good night, everybody. Uh, have a good week. We'll see you uh, next Tuesday. Good night, everyone.